This right, conference will now be recorded. All right, so we're getting started promptly at noon today. Thank you so much for joining this call. Um, I felt the need based on um, a lot of very basic questions that a lot of folks were asking to just have this mini training and also open the floor up to questions and answers in real time. Uh, this webinar is going to be recorded and it's going to be filed in our phone banker portal. So, um, yeah, first of all, I want to thank you all for your efforts. As you saw in today's updates, we have 250 folks who are um, signed up to phone bank, and we've also made over 6,000 calls in Alameda County just in the last couple of weeks. So, uh, really great shout out to all of you who are on the call today. So, just to review Census 101, um, there are five things uh, to share about Census 2020. Um, and this is really what we are calling folks about to provide them census information. We are not inputting any uh, census information into the actual census form and submitting it on behalf of um, our, our, our community. What we're doing is providing reminders and information about these five things. One, that they can answer by phone or online. They can also answer on paper. So if anyone has let you know that they got their paper form in the mail, yes, that's totally possible. Paper forms were mailed out um, the, I think the second week of April starting, or the first week of April starting, uh, I received mine on April 7th. Um, I think the date they wanted uh, them to be out was April 8th. So I got mine a little bit early and then they were staggering those. So between April 7th and within two weeks of that date, you could, um, you could expect that everyone would have received that paper form in the mail. Uh, the census is safe, so individual census responses are confidential and protected by law. That law is Title 13. Um, we have other really in-depth, extensive trainings on what Title 13 is and uh, you know, data privacy protection, cybersecurity protection. So if you want to deep dive into um, cybersecurity, Title 13, and all of the ways in which data is being protected in the census, then please do refer to the partner portal. I'm going to update that with additional resources on safety and cybersecurity uh, and confidentiality, which is going to be a really big piece, especially reaching out to our immigrant communities and our communities of color who do not trust the law, basically. Uh, so the census is important. Um, the census count uh, determines federal funding and political representation for the next 10 years. Uh, and the census does not ask about citizenship or immigration status. Also, the census counts everyone. So this is a really great way for folks who can't register to vote, for example, can participate in our um, in, in, in our democracy. So that's young children, non-citizens, uh, folks who are just otherwise not eligible to vote, um, et cetera. All right, so as we mentioned, the census is a government survey. I'm hoping that everyone on this call has taken their census as we are reminding everyone else to take their census um, and can and has familiarized themselves uh, with the form. But it does ask uh, two questions of the household and seven questions of the individual, making nine questions total. It, on average, it takes only about 10 minutes to complete the census. So uh, in 10 minutes, our communities can uh, receive the resources and um, power that they deserve for the next 10 years. All right, so why do we get counted? Um, so this data are used by all levels of government to create jobs, improve housing, build better roads and schools, fund community programs for seniors, children, and families. Um, it also determines our political representation, so uh, representatives that are allocated to our community to, re to represent our needs in the House of Representatives. It also determines how district lines are going to be drawn. Um, so uh, shortly after the census is conducted, local governments go into their redistricting process. Um, and so this really is going to have uh, a huge impact on what kind of funding and power our communities are gonna have for the next decade. 
All right, and as I mentioned, everyone counts in the census. This is one of our main uh, talking points. If someone's like, uh, well, I'm not sure who to count in my household, uh, people are counted where they stay most of the time. Uh, if you are interacting with someone and they are unsure if they need to count their um, you know, relative who's staying with them temporarily or um, you know, if there's a child who splits their time between their household and another household, et cetera, if they have a tenant especially um, that, and they have an informal rental agreement where that person rents a room, um, every single person under one address gets counted on the same census form. It's okay if you talk to someone and they believe that they were not included in the household census, that person can submit another census. Uh, and they can do that by just going online and going on the phone and taking their census that way. They don't need the paper form. Uh, another question that comes up very often from community members, um, and thank you to everyone who has completed the questions uh, survey that we sent out. Um, it really helps us to streamline uh, the question and answers um, that you all have. And so one of the biggest questions that we got from community members um, based on your interactions was that they did not have their code. And therefore, uh, folks did not know how to support those people in getting their census done. Well, you don't need your code to take the census. All you need to do is go online or go on the phone and call the Census Bureau or go online and say, click on the link that says, that you don't have your code and it allows you to go through and complete the census. So you don't need your code at all to take it. All right, so how do most people get counted? You all know this, you get counted online by visiting my2020census.gov by phone uh, and there are 13 different phone numbers that you would call depending on what language uh, you need support in or by mail. Um, as I mentioned, um, all of the mail paper forms should have been mailed out by now. And so, um, especially if you are leaving voicemails, and I just updated the partner portal and the phone banker guide with the very short um, voicemail script for you all to use. Um, but basically, when we're leaving those messages, we want them to be very short, and we want to let them know that these are the ways that you can take the census, and for them to let their friends and neighbors and family know to also take the census. Um, so, so we definitely want to make sure that um, folks know how they can respond if they didn't get anything in the mail. Uh, they don't have to. They they did not have to have take uh, received any letter or postcard or form to take the census. They can just go online or go by phone and take the census that way. All right. So this is what I was alluding to. Um, as you can see, if you look at the screenshot of the website where it says there's that dark bar that says log in in white letters just under that it says if you do not have a census id click here and it takes you to putting your address in and then subsequently completing the census uh, this is the letter that was sent out uh, starting on march 12th uh, and it um, the the paper form is only available in two languages as you know english and spanish and then the online and phone options are available in these 13 different languages. All right, so we get counted where we stay most of the time on April 1st. April 1st obviously has passed, um, but that is the day that um, orients people if they do not have a good answer to where they stay most of the time. So this means for folks who um, are couch surfing and are in transition, um, they uh, cannot answer, you know, where do you stay most of the time, which is six months plus a day. They would put where they were on April 1st. Uh, due to shelter in place and um, the COVID-19 global health emergency crisis, uh, the census has been extended through October 31st. That does not necessarily mean that we are all going to be making calls until October 31st. That is simply to state that um, there is more time for people to take the census, although we are urging them to take the census as soon as possible and get it over with. Um, so because the census was extended by three months, um, that also means that census takers or enumerators are not going to be making their follow-up visits until mid-August. So they're sort of in a three-month delay process. Um, so if anyone asks about that, 
um, ideally, they would have taken their census before um, the Census Bureau starts its non-response follow-up, um, just so that that's one less household for the Census Bureau to have to follow up with. And quite frankly, our communities are probably not answering the door to the Census Bureau anyway. All right, so these are really important do's and don'ts that I want to cover with you all. Um, so do tell people that you do not work for the Census Bureau and that you are a volunteer. There's only really one law on the books that says, uh, that sort of directs how we can interact with people, and that is that we cannot impersonate census takers or say that we work for the Census Bureau. I had a question about whether um, we could provide the census form so that the person could complete the census for the person that's on the phone. And we absolutely cannot do that because we are volunteers. We are not enumerators. If you complete the census for someone on your computer and that other person is on the phone, then you are basically acting as an enumerator. And that is an absolute no-no. We cannot condone that. Um, but if they have their paper form in front of them and they have questions for you about what the census is asking them or if the postage is prepaid, et cetera, and what they do after they complete it on paper, or how to locate the phone number, or how to locate the website, then those are the things that we want to help people with. You know, you all know what the website is and the phone numbers, because we, we have all that information in the phone banker guide. Um, we know that the um, envelope that you return your paper census form in is a prepaid envelope. So all they need to do is complete the paper form, put it into that provided um, a, a address, pre-addressed and pre-posted um, envelope and then drop it in the mail. That's all they need to do. Um, I know that it's also a line in our scripts to ask people how they're doing during this time. Uh, and if folks have a lot of questions for you or need to be directed to resources to help them during this difficult time, then definitely refer them to 211. 211 is going to be able to provide uh, information in 200 different languages. And they also are contracted uh, by our regional partners to provide census information as well. So folks could very easily call 211, uh, which is kind of like the 411 for social services. All right. So using the PDI app, <clears throat> I know there have been a lot of questions about how to use the app, how to sync your list, et cetera. Um, so depending on what, um, phone or a mobile device you're using, you would either locate the Census PDI app in the uh, iOS um, Apple Store, or you would uh, download the Census PDI app in the Google Play Store if you have an Android. Now, I do want to update you all um, that, just in case you missed it in this morning's email, there are issues that are happening with Google and Google Maps, and because of that, some folks who have Android devices right now are not able to open up the app. So that's nothing that we at Alameda County can fix. We have to wait on Google to fix that issue. So as soon as I get an update on that, I'll definitely share that out with people. I know I had one person, two people tell me about this issue. I escalated it to the PDI folks, uh, our regional partners actually, who then escalated to the PDI folks, and we learned that um, there's an issue with the Google app, which is anyone using an Android device. Anyone using an iPhone should be fine to use the app. All right, when you log in, you of course are gonna use the email that you provided and the password phones, the number four, and census. So that's phones for census, all lowercase. The password is never going to change. It's always going to be that password. Um, you will then be directed to a My Assignments page. It's going to say Downloading Assignments. Then, while on this page, you're going to click those three dots in the upper right-hand corner, and you're going to sync your list. This is an extremely important part of the process. If you do not sync your list, you are not going to get your assignments. Um, and this is a really important step for you all to take because we can't sync your list for you on the back end, unfortunately. All we can do is make sure that we assign things, uh, assign assignments to you, and then you have to sync your list so they show up on your mobile device. All right, then you would go ahead and click the white box showing the assignment. Um, 
and you would select an address as shown. And when you are on this walk list page, you have to put the um, list in call mode. So you would click these three dots at the upper right hand corner, select call mode, and then when you click into a street, then, or, or I'm sorry, an address, then the number will either pop up where you can actually see the number if you have an iPhone. If you have an Android device, this phone number is not going to pop up. Once you click call house, it's going to automatically call. So you're not going to be able to press star 67 like the slide shows uh, unless you have an iPhone and are able to copy that phone number and then, um, you know, when you open up your dialer, put in star 67 and then paste that number into your dialer. Um, <clears throat> so for folks who do not want their personal phone number to be showing, they will need to um, download and activate a Google Voice number. With a Google Voice number, what you'll need to do is set that Google Voice number as the default in your phone settings. Then any calls that you make are going to be made through Google Voice, which means that Google Voice number and not your personal phone number are going to show up. This is also a good practice because, like, for example, my phone still has a Monterey area code of 831, and when folks see um, area codes that they don't recognize, they are less likely to answer that call. Additionally, if you press star 67 and block your number, then they also are not likely to answer your call. So using a Google Voice, it's going to give you a 510 phone number, um, and so it might make someone more comfortable to answer your calls. All right, so then after you've had your interaction, so you've called the person, say they've answered, if you click begin house survey, then your script is gonna pop up. Okay, you're gonna click next in the survey, and then you'll fill in if you're helping them in any other language, you'll click next, and then at some point, you'll need to ask them the question, ideally early on, hi, my name is Alessia, I'm calling from Alameda County. Um, I hope that you're doing okay during this crisis. Um, have you completed the census? It's as simple as that. Um, yes, undecided, or no. You have to make sure that you select one of these options for them, and then press next. And then you'll be done with that household, if you are able to speak with someone. If you left a message um, and you weren't able to complete to speak with someone, then you would do one of these three options. One is left a message. You called a valid phone number with a live person, but a live person did not answer or does not have a voicemail set up. The household needs another follow-up call. So left a message means that they need a follow-up call. So even if you weren't able to actually leave a message because your voicemail box was full but you know that the number is a working number, then you would select left message. If the number is a bad number, if they've moved and no longer live in Alameda County, um, et cetera, or if they're like, I don't want you to call me anymore because I I don't want to get your calls, then you would select this little plus sign that's just above left a message, and you would signal to us that we do not need to follow up with that person because either it's a bad number or they don't want us to call them. We absolutely do not want to call somebody back who doesn't want to be called. We would politely get off the phone, thank you for your time, hope you be well, end the call, do the house survey, say do not call, and then it'll show up as red, and then we know not to call those people. They will fall off of our list. All right, so color classifications. I've gotten a lot of questions about this. I do understand that for some people who are filling out this, um, the house surveys, that the yellow and the red are swapped. I have raised that issue with our regional partners um, who are working through the, uh, working with PDI who, who are contracted by the state of California. I'm so sorry to, <laughs> provide so many different layers of folks that we work with, but it's a little bit of a maze. Um, so anyway, what I'm trying to say is that 
um, I have escalated this issue to the appropriate people to, to fix it, basically. So um, some households, when you say do not call, it turns yellow. I mean, it turns, it, yeah, it turns yellow instead of red. Or if you say left voicemail, it turns red instead of yellow. Um, so nothing that you need to worry about. But if you have experienced this issue, just know that we have made the appropriate people aware. So long as you can see the ones that are green that you need to call, um, then you don't have to worry about the yellow or the reds because we are not making follow-up phone calls right now. I know a lot of people have been really doing their due diligence and leaving voicemails, but I mean, leaving voicemails and uh, making two and three follow-up calls. But once you've left a voicemail and completed that house survey and marked that person yellow, you can move on to the next call. Once you've gone through all of your calls and your assignments, then you of course would complete that volunteer form again and say that you would like more assignments. As I mentioned um, in past presentations, there are 413,000 hard to count community members in Alameda County alone, and we have only made 6,000 calls. So there are a lot more calls to get through, the progress that we're making is incredible. I think we're making the most calls in the Bay Area right now, which is awesome. However, there's a huge need. So don't feel pressured to go back and follow up with the yellow dots. Um, and, you know, because it can be a bit discouraging if people aren't answering your call. You just want to keep moving forward. And then if we've exhausted all of our calls, then we can talk about going back and calling those people and making a second attempt. I hope that makes sense. All right, the phone banker guide. So the phone banker guide that has been provided to all of you is going to be your holy grail of information when you forget a step, if you have basic questions about using the app, et cetera, it, will, it breaks down every step for you in the guide. Um, so do please refer, uh, refer to this guide because um, your question might be answered just simply by reading this guide and reviewing the presentation. This basically is just a condensed version of the slides that I showed you, walking you through what happens in different scenarios. Say you can communicate with a person in another language, you would select that language, and then you would fill out whether they completed the census or not. If you cannot communicate in residence language, do not know which language is needed, et cetera, you would exit the survey and indicate not home uh, because uh, we, we don't want them to fall off of our list. All right, so here's a sample phone banking script. I don't think I need to review this very much. And also in here, oh, okay, so another thing, if someone has not completed the census, and they would like to get reminders about taking the census or more information, uh, then feel free to promote this texting campaign. Um, it's optional, um, but if someone is like, yes, I'd like to receive information about the census on my phone, then you would pull this up on your computer and type in their phone number and then submit it on their behalf. And then um, that lets the United Way Bay Area know, our amazing regional partners, it lets them know, it puts them in the um, text campaign system. And then uh, they would get reminder messages about taking the census on their phone. All right, and then of course, uh, after you have your conversation, you thank them for their time and wish them well. All right, so here are some best practices, which are pretty, um, self-explanatory and common sense to make sure that your organization and the issues are being represented well and correctly. Connect with the caller, ask them how they're doing with the current COVID-19 crisis, provide them with that 211 number if they need it. Um, remember that they can't see you, so use your voice to convey passion and excitement about the census. Know your audience and focus on the key facts. Make sure you do not accidentally engage in grassroots lobbying or partisan races. Stick to the census messages. That's another really important point. And then these are talking points that are available to you. And this presentation is already saved in the partner portal, um, which I will go ahead and um, 
I will go ahead and before I take questions, I'm going to show you what the partner portal looks like. I have linked this in every email that I've sent to you. It's a phone banker partner portal. It has instructions on how to sign up. If anyone is like, oh, that's great that you're volunteering and I'd like to volunteer too. Um, it's our preference that you do not simply just give folks our email addresses. As you can imagine, we are interfacing with 250 volunteers. You could very easily forward them this email and then they can get set up right away. And it really streamlines, streamlines the process. It has webinar links, the partner portal, the volunteer form, tutorial on how to set up a Google Voice number. And um, we, have, we have given ourselves 24 hours to get all new signups into the system and with turf cut. So just know that if it takes a little bit, that's because we have a large volume of folks, which is amazing that so many folks want to participate. Um, but it is just Alina and myself getting everybody uh, onboarded. So uh, self-help is sort of the best uh, at this point, this is the uh, phone banker volunteer form. I'm actually going to open this up in an incognito window so that you can see what it looks like on your end. Oops. Okay. All right. So for a lot of folks that have been doing a really amazing job and have completed all of their assignments that we gave them, please do fill out this form again to be assigned additional calls. I understand that the language here is a little bit, mm, it, it might not apply to everyone because it asks if you, if you completed three assignments and would like to make additional calls. Um, even if you haven't completed three assignments, just say yes. Here, I'm going to uh, update the language um, because so this, to give you some insight, the system only allows us to give three assignments for one account. So uh, if you say yes here, it triggers to us that we either need to uh, add additional turf to your current account or provide you with an additional account. Actually, what I'm going to do is add another question here. All right. Sorry if that was confusing. The point is that if you need more turf, um, then you don't need to just email us. You can just go back to this form. It'll show up in a spreadsheet that we manage on the back end, and then we can just go straight to it and, uh, uh, and provide you with additional turf. All right, so that's that. Then we have the phone banker feedback form and the question and answer form. Uh, just so you know, we have provided questions as uh, answers to questions that were submitted as of yesterday. You all have access to this. Um, as you can see, there have been a few questions. Looks like there's a couple more. When is phone banking over? Um, I have not heard back from Alessia on how to get a new list. Really sorry from whoever this is. This kind of question, as you can tell, like I don't know who, who this person is. So uh, with a question like this, you, you would definitely please go ahead and email me uh, because I don't know how to help you if, if, um, if I don't know who you are. Could be um, that it might just not be syncing on your end. This, um, this software that we use is very glitchy and has been a bit problematic, especially if you're coming from an Android device. Um, so, oh yeah. all right, so looks like a few more people joined us, which is great. I will open it up to questions now. And then someone is, is not muted. If you can please mute yourself, so that we don't get feedback that we're getting right now. Are there any questions that I can answer? Oh, hi, Marnie. I just updated the uh, voicemail script this week. And here I will go to it right now. 
so that you can see, which is, all right, it's under resources. So here's the voicemail script. And then it's also updated in the new phone banker guide. Which is here. Voicemail script. Okay. All right. Please go to phone. Ba okay. Is there a script at all? Where we need to leave a message. Switch in PDI app. Well, the census for someone over the phone. So Johnny, absolutely not, unfortunately. Even if they give you their census ID, we are not enumerators. And it's actually against the law for us to complete the census on behalf of someone else uh, because we are not sworn enumerators. People who work for the Census Bureau take a lifetime oath of office to not share any personally identifiable information with any outside party. Um, and that actually has teeth to it because if they do break that law, they would have to pay a $250,000 fine and or have to spend up to five years in federal prison. So um, yeah, it's really important that we do not um, fill out the census for people. Additionally, another thing that we cannot do is that we, we cannot offer to provide assistance with completing the census. We can provide them assistance if, if the caller asks you. Okay, does that make sense to everyone? If someone asks you, um, yes, I did receive my census, but I'm not understanding what it's asking me. Can you help explain the questions? Then you can say yes, and then you would wait for them to ask their questions and you would answer their questions. Um, what we don't want to do is call people and say, can I help you take your census? Because then that opens the door, right, to, you know, us looking like we're fraudulently trying to collect census data on people when that is absolutely not what we want to do. Okay. I hope that makes sense to everyone. All right. So that's all the questions I see in the chat box. Are there any other questions? If anyone wants to unmute themselves and ask a question, please feel free to do so. I did reserve until 1245 to answer questions. Um, so I can hang around, you know, for a couple more minutes. Uh, otherwise, that concludes our presentation. And yeah, if anyone has questions, please feel free to unmute yourself or put a question into the chat box. Uh, yeah, hi, Alessia, it's Johnny from Eating UCC. Hi, Johnny. Hi, how are you? Hey, I, good, good, thanks. Um, I had a quick question about using the PDI app. Um, I filled yeah. out for my neighborhood. It asked you what city and neighborhood you'd be willing to phone bank for. And um, yeah. it placed me elsewhere. And since we have a food bank going on right there at the church and we serve a lot of people, we want to continue promoting it for the community. So um, is there a way to change my assigned location or the calls? because I, I put for my community, but it sent me all the way to San Leandro. So I was wondering if we could change that for me and my, my team. Okay, I know that I just assigned Marvin, who's also with Eden UCC, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Marvin Weiser, okay. I think I might have assigned him to Ashland. I will go back and look at yours, Johnny, and see where we placed you, and then make any corrections. I will let you know that I think there's still turf that hasn't been cut yet in Ashland, but Cherryland is really heavily being um, phone banked in right now with from uh, other partners as well. So yeah. could be that placed in San Leandro as like the next closest, but let us take a look into that, uh, Johnny, and then we'll get back to you today um, and see if we can get you more Ashland or if I can. Um, have you tag team the Ashland tracks that I gave to Marvin? That's also possible. And you can both be calling into the same tracks. And you don't you won't overlap because you'll be able to see what 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 areas um what households because they'll be color coded, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. With the green dot, the yellow and the red, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, uh, another question. Yeah, that was pretty much my follow-up question as well, because I was wondering if maybe, because um, I know other members of our team got placed elsewhere, so I was thinking maybe due to the scarcity of phone bankers in that area and the oversaturation in phone bankers in our area, maybe we got placed where it was needed the most. So that was just a clarification question. Yeah, no, if you can, so another thing is that if they didn't say that they were with Eden UCC or said that they wanted to um, phone bank anywhere or just said generally like unincorporated, um, we yeah. only use that form to make the decision of where to place them. So if you can do me a favor and email me the list of their names and then I can go back in and just double check and then reassign them as needed. Um, oh, okay, yeah. That was just my uh, question, personal question for our, our group here in uh, Cherryland. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, Great. Cool. Uh, so Cherryland. Yeah, okay. Great. Thank you, Johnny. Oh, one more thing. Uh, regarding the PDI app, um, so we have to have the Google Voice number in our phones in order to make the, the calls go from Google to the number we're calling, right? That's right. That's right, oh, unfortunately, wow. because, yeah, I know that they're talking, the PDI folks are talking about using a third-party dialer. Um, we don't have confirmation on that yet. That's why I haven't provided it in any of my updates, but could be that we have a third party dialer that we can use, which would mean that you could just make calls from your computer um, or yeah. use that dialer, you know, make calls and it wouldn't go from your phone. So right mm -hmm. now we're sort of working with what we, what we have to work with, but maybe in the future we might be able to have the third party dialer. It really depends on whether they want to, um, expend additional funds to have that. So. No. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> All right. Any Thank other you. questions? Of course. Hi, Alessa. This is Ernest. Hi, Ernest. How are you? I am doing super fantastic. What I needed to know. Due to the virus, this is my first training, even though I have been into the portals. So I needed to know. Oh. Yeah, so I needed to know, is there anything that was in the first two that I need to review in order to catch up or am I on target? I think you're fine if you watched this one, to be honest. Um, okay. It would be really helpful for you to really read through uh, the materials in the resources section. Um, it has a frequently asked questions um, um, chart that we put together. Um, it also has, I'm also gonna add the privacy, confidentiality information. Um, it has our who, what, when, where, why. So yeah, just review the resources and then do let me know if you have any questions. The biggest um, sort of do's and don'ts are about are what I mentioned, which is that we're not entering in information for people um, because we cannot act as enumerators, but we can answer questions. Um, and yeah, if you have any additional questions on sort of the basics, then feel free to go back to that um, questions form and answer any questions at all that you have in there. And then we uh, update that form two, uh, three times a week. Um, so you can visit, you can go back and visit it and, and check for updates there. Unless it's, of course, if it's something that's time sensitive, then you can certainly email us. That's totally fine. We're just trying to sort of manage the, the load of questions that come in that, that can be answered based on looking, you know, just either back at the PowerPoint or, or checking out that question and answers um, Thank you. spreadsheet. Great. Thanks, Ernest. You're welcome. All right, we've got six more minutes. If there's any other questions, I'm happy to take them. As I mentioned, this webinar is being recorded. 
and um, it will be posted to the partner portal. It's going to be, right now you can find the past webinar here if you click on, on this quick start guide. You see that there is the phone banker training here. Uh, this webinar and also the past webinar, we're going to save them to our YouTube channel as well. So they'll be saved in here as actual videos. So it'll be a little bit easier to locate um, after we get them in video format instead of a, a link. Um, so you can look forward to that. Oh, okay. I see I have another question. After completing the survey page, the household do not would not turn red. Um, but it's the same as bad number or do not call it seems in the survey page the household dot would turn red um hi caxton um yeah i'm not sure about after you completed the survey page were you did you um did you select the left of voicemail or is anyone is anyone else having this issue would you delete assignments for an account? If we can do more, do we need to provide another email address? <clears throat> it seems confusing. Um, just first uh, addressing Caxton's question. Um, I'm not sure why that household is turning red. Um, I'm definitely going to um, just raise that again with our partners. Um, and are you saying, if you could just drop into the chat box, um, if, um, if you selected the left a voicemail or what the, um, how you answered the survey, it would help me to understand why it's turning red or if it's a glitch in the system. All right. I have a question from Tanya. I know you said we can't have more than three assignments per account. Would you delete assignments from an account if we need more? So uh, this is a great question. If you have completed three assignments, please do go to the phone bank volunteer form and select, have you completed three assignments? You would select yes. And because the, the reason why we want you to do this is because we need to create a new account for you. Um, the, those, those are just the instructions from the folks who administer this program. Um, and then we need to assign you a new username. The password is always going to be the same, uh, but you would provide us with a new username so that you can remember what that username is. Uh, and then what we would do, because the username has to resemble an email address, we would just put your new username at census.org, as is shown here on the screen. So please do fill that out, um, and then we'll get you a new account. I hope that was helpful. All right. Any other questions? We have two more minutes here on the call. Thank you so much for calling in. Really appreciate your time. I have a question for you all. Did you find this useful? Do you think that having a refresher training is useful? If so, then we can schedule another one in the next couple of weeks. It would be about the same uh, timing, uh, but it might include more of like updates and addressing issues, reviewing the PDI uh, stuff. You let me know. Oh, Tanya said yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Oh, I also wanted to let you guys know to please visit our Facebook page. Um, there's just all kinds of stuff that we post there and then it, it would be nice to hear from you all, like if you had a really great phone banking day or or anything like that, just please do, you know, tag us in your Facebook posts, like and reshare things. I We plan to provide um, regular updates on our Facebook as well as through the emails that we send you. And if you could reshare those and like them, then it would be really great. And just to have a really, um, you know, great sort of social community um, as we're all doing these calls. And all right, let's see. Uh, Johnny, yep, very useful walkthrough. Not confused as I was before this. That's a great feedback. Thank you, Johnny. My PDF is working fine and I'm on Android. 
Yeah, I don't know um, what the issue is. Like I said, I only had about two people who said that was an issue. And I think it also depends on which Android app you have. It's not like Apple, right, where it's like that one operating system and you know that it's going to work the same for all the phones. If you have Android, there's like thousands of different Android devices out there. So, um, yeah, I it could just be these folks' phones, um, their apps not working based on the um, based on the issue at Google. So, um, yeah, glad to hear that it's working for you. It is 1245. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, you know where to find us. You know where to find the partner portal, where to find all of those different resources available to you. So um, uh, please do make use of them. And then if there's anything time sensitive, anything else, then you know where to find Alina and myself. Thank you so much.